ten, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. On with your spirit. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. At that time, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is the feast day of St. Peter's and Paul. St. Peter and Paul. All right, the two chief apostles. And that's what we heard in both the gospel lesson and the epistle lesson. In the gospel lesson, we heard about Peter's confession. He was the first of the apostles to, to confess that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, and, and at that point his name was... Uh, you know, he was Simon, but he became Peter, Petros in Greek, and it's a play on words, um, rock, stone, and on this rock I will build my church. That's been uh, an issue of historical contention, we'll talk about that some other time, but in the Orthodox understanding it's his confession, Peter's confession, that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't Elias. He wasn't Jeremiah. But he was the very Son of God. That confession is the confession on which the church will be built and Peter was the chief apostle. Paul was an apostle who, by his own words, was born out of due season. He wasn't one of, he wasn't the, one of the 12 originally called. He actually had a vision of Jesus after the resurrection of Christ. In fact, he was a persecutor of the church. Now, Paul was one of the most brilliant men easily that ever lived. He was certainly the most brilliant man in the ways of his fathers of the time. And he was slated to become the chief rabbi of Israel. And this man, this man knew his tradition. He knew his history very learned, very intelligent, and probably would have ended up leading the nation of Israel in its religious matters. But what happens? What happens? And in fact, before I go to that, in fact, the reason he persecuted the church is because he thought that the gospel of Christ was a perversion of the truth. So he's on his way to Damascus. This is where the phrase, the road to Damascus experience comes from. You've all heard that phrase, but sometimes we don't really know what it means. He's on his way to Damascus and he encounters Christ. He's knocked off his horse. He turns blind. He cries out to God and what does he hear? He hears the voice of Jesus. And he realizes that what these Christians were saying is indeed true. Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. Jesus is indeed the Son of God. And it knocks sense into him. 
and he becomes a believer. So the church that he persecuted, remember he had his, he had his experience after the church was already established that began with the preaching of Peter. He had this experience and he ends up joining those who he once persecuted. It did not happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. Especially, especially a transformation, a deep personal transformation. It took time. But the encounter was sudden and the encounter was real and the encounter with Christ was unquestionable. It changed his mind. And he too was called by God to become an apostle. So we have Peter and we have Paul. The word apostle, apostolos, means one who is sent forth. And they are sent forth with a particular message that when it is preached, Christ himself reveals himself through that preaching to the hearer. That's why Paul says, he says, how they will they hear without a, without a preacher? And what he means by preacher is how will they see Christ if the words of truth are not spoken to people who don't know them? But if the people hear them and if their hearts are open, then Christ will reveal himself to the hearer just like he revealed himself to Paul. Paul, in being one born out of due season, faced a lot of hostility and suspicion at first. Because how could this man who persecuted the church now be one of us? Is he a spy? Is he trying to destroy us? These are the things that people asked. But no, he was indeed called. And, and what happened then, you have Peter and Paul, and he has some conflict ending between them. Okay? The conflict is, we should fear conflict as long as we, we understand that conflict and, and, and disagreements properly handled and with both people in search of the truth will end up working to the, the glory of God and deeper knowledge of him and also that his purposes would be accomplished more in the world. Peter represented the Jews. Paul represented who? Now, Paul was a Jew. He was the Jew of all Jews. He really was. But Paul said, I will go to the Gentiles. And that's where God called him. So Paul began preaching in the Gentile world. Peter was, was, was very dominant in Israel at first. Um, then after the persecution started, he went to Antioch with the Christians. He was actually, Peter was the first bishop of Antioch. I don't know if you're aware of that. He was the very first bishop of Antioch. Then he ended up in Rome. Paul, Paul went where? Well, he went to Greece. And he started preaching the gospel. And the first place he always went to were the synagogues. The only place he really spoke in open air was in Athens. And at the um, on Mars Hill, we've heard that. And if you go, it's it's you got to do this sometime. If you go to the Parthenon and you see the rock and the it, it's on a hill, of course, the Acropolis, Acropoli, the high city. And that's where they always put the government buildings and the temples and so on and so forth. Acropolis means Acropoli, the high city. And below that, you can see where the marketplace once was. Well, Paul went to the rock right next to the the Acropolis, also called the Parthenon, the temple and he preached the gospel. It's the only place though where, it's, where the scripture records him sp speaking in open air. Why did he do that? Because there was no synagogue in Athens. There was a synagogue in Thessaloniki where he went first, <coughs> there was a synagogue in Berea, there was a synagogue in Corinth. He always went to the synagogues first and he spoke to the Jews. And it's the Jews and the, who accepted Christ as Messiah and it's the Jews who brought him into the community. And it always happens in cities first. Okay, usually in, when, you, when you see how the gospel is spread and how Christianity is accepted, it's always from the city into the country. Really, it's the country is usually the last to, to catch up. But he went to the synagogues, people received his word, and they converted to Christ. And it ended up what? It ended up converting a whole nation and ultimately laying the groundwork of a brand new civilization. Western civilization. The history is rich. Come on in, Dimitri. Good to see you. The history is rich and the history is varied, and one day we'll have a whole class on it. 
but they heard his word. They heard his word. And so, and they received his word with gladness. And so Paul is known then as the apostle to the Gentiles. Peter to the Jews, Paul to the Gentiles. All of us here, to a person, are here because of Paul's preaching. We are. Paul, as I said, was also a very learned man. And that's why most of the New Testament consists of his writings. His writings are called epistles, letters, and they were letters to the various churches that he founded in order to keep them on track. Peter has got two books, First and Second Peter, and it's very good. But the one who teaches us today is still the Apostle Paul, because we have his words in Holy Scripture. We remember these two men on this day because they are the chief of the apostles. They really are. But it's very interesting when you think about this, that, that Peter was called by Christ, as I said, I will make you fishers of men. We heard that last week, right? But Paul was one who was called out of due season, again, using his words. Where did this man come from? Where did he come from? Well, he came because he was called. And that's a lot like us. We're the Gentiles. We're the ones grafted in. We're called out too in the same way. And we're grafted into the very commonwealth of Israel that finds its completion in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now when you hear Peter and Paul, you have a better understanding of who they are. So through the prayers of the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, may the Lord have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Please rise.